Hello students, so this is Brox Gags, I'm going to make this uh, video demonstration of modeling the bell crank part you see before you. And so, as you can see, uh, the part geometry changes a little bit. We've got a default configuration on the left hand side. Uh, you can see the, the nice slot cut there, and then a second configuration on the right hand side here, where you can see the slot cut's been removed, we've added a series of holes, you can see the chamfers in the middle boss there, and there's also a small cut out of the uh, kind of closest boss, if you will, in the isometric view there. Uh, the part is in millimeters for the length, unit of length there, you can see in the title block, and it's also made from ASI 1020 steel, and so there's the cover slide. If we go to sheet two, here are all the dimensions for uh, that default configuration. And in sheet three, we've got the changes to be made for config A there. And so at this point, um, I would encourage you, uh, if you're watching the video, to kind of pause the uh, video at this point. Um, you've seen the different sheets in the drawing there and go ahead and attempt to model it yourself and then if you get stuck you can obviously play the video and see how I have modeled the, the geometry and so with that being said um, I'll go ahead and jump right in here and so I've already got SOLIDWORKS open starting a new part I'm going to change the units to MMGS and go ahead and apply the material as well as 1020 AISI 1020 right here uh, one thing to check is the origin placement. You can see the origin is located in the middle of that central boss. And if you zoom in here on the front view, you can see it's in the midplane as far as the height goes there. Also in the other views, you can investigate, and I believe it is right at the central axis there of that hole. And so what I'm going to start off for my first boss extrude, my base feature, is going to basically be drawing the geometry for this middle section here. Uh, that middle section being the section with a depth here of 15 millimeters. And so what I'm really going to be drawing is kind of the outer profile of the top view here and also including the holes as well. And so I'll go ahead and grab the top plane so I'm in the right orientation and start my sketches. And so here I'll start off with just drawing the three holes. The three holes are going to be the holes or three circles are going to be the holes for uh, my part. And I'll connect them with some lines here and that I'll use as construction geometry. And so these lines are construction geometry, so I'm going to click on them and tell them, hey, make these construction geometry. Uh, that way they're not going to be considered when I go to the boss extrude command. So the angle here you can see is 125 degrees between them. So I'll go ahead and apply that. Uh, the horizontal center decision distance is 100 millimeters, so I can go ahead and apply it. The inclined line there has a length of 50 millimeters. And so be careful. Uh, notice what I just did is I've created a dimension, but it's not aligned with the inclined line. It's a vertical dimension, so be careful there. Uh, when you create it, smart dimension if you place it like this it would be aligned but if I pull off to the left that's a vertical dimension if I go down below it's a horizontal dimension and so just be very careful on the exact type of dimension you're trying to achieve there and so now just to size the the circles for the holes and so the top left has a diameter of 10 the middle a diameter of 18 and the far right a diameter of 12. And so I've got everything fully defined at this point. Uh, so now let's go ahead and put in the, the arcs on the outside here. And so the arcs are to look like just concentric circles. And they have a radius of 10, a radius of 15, and a radius of 12.5. And so I'll go ahead and draw my circles first. Come back in in smart dimension. And so notice when I apply this smart dimension, it immediately goes to the diameter there. You can see diameter of 21.28, uh, but if I look at the drawing, it has a radius of 10. And so how do I switch from the radius to the diameter dimensions? Well, you can do that through the leaders. Uh, just have the dimension selected. I can go to the leaders tab, and right here, this icon right here, 
is radius. And so I can select that and notice it jumps to the radius dimension. And so that needs to be a radius of 10 to fully define it. Next, a radius of 15 here. So again, apply the dimension. Now select it and change the leaders to radius. And then here, 12.5. Each time, again, applying the dimension, clicking the dimension to get it selected, and then going to the leaders tab and changing it from diameter to radius. And so we've got, again, everything fully defined at this point. And so now let's focus on the lines. There's line segments connecting these arcs. And it appears they become tangent with the arcs, with the exception right here where we've got the tangencies, but then we've had a sketch fillet on top of it. And so I'll go ahead and start first by just connecting the arcs with the lines. Here, not being overly concerned whether it catches the tangent or not. And so it appears to cut the tangents on this line segment. You can see the tangent relationship here and here, uh, but not the others. So we'll have to go back in and add those geometric relations. So just holding control down to select both the line and the arc, and then selecting the tangent relation that's showing up there in the quick access box as usual. And one more, it looks like. Uh, just like so. And again, arise at a fully defined sketch. And so now we need to clean up the insides of this. We don't need all of these arc segments and lines. And so I'll go to trim entities here. Uh, we got power trim. And so we would have to trim these away. And these. As well as here. 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 And here. And then the radius of 15 here. Which gets us to our desired cross section here. And so we've got the fillet in there, radius 15. And everything's nice and fully defined. And so now we would extrude this the 15 millimeters for the depth. Uh, notice we need to mid-plane extrude it in order to keep the origin right in the middle there. And so I'll go straight into the Boston base extrude. I'll change from blind to mid-plane and then change the value to 15. And now we've got our first boss extrude created. As far as next, I'll work on these other bosses. You can see the circular bosses here. They're at two different heights. One's 25 units tall, the other's 35. And so those will have to be two different features. And so I'll start with the middle one here, uh, 35 millimeters high. And so again, I'm going to get on the top plane and create a sketch. Go normal to it here. I'm going to use convert entities so I can grab the edge associated with that circle and preserve the whole geometry. I'll draw another concentric circle. And what I'll do here is I will connect the arc to the circle using the geometric relation coradial. And what this allows me to do is create a nice fully defined sketch without having to create any dimensions. And so you can see the sketch there is nice and fully defined and is what I am looking for. And so I'll now extrude Boston base. Again, everything's supposed to be symmetric about that top plane at this point. And so mid-plane extrusion, 35 to the overall depth. Now we'll just repeat that process for the two smaller ones on the top end here and the, the far right end here. And so again, top plane is where we'll create our sketch. We use convert entities to reference those existing holes. Draw our concentric circles. And then again, co-radial would be the geometric relation we're looking for there. And so those look appropriate. 
And now we'll go ahead and boss extrude again, mid plane, except for this time going to 25 for the height. And so, so far, so good. Uh, so what do we have? We've got a couple cuts to make. Uh, we've got this slot cut here. If you look in the front view, it's also mirrored to the bottom. We've got this rectangular cut as well. And then we've got some fillets to put in here. Um, I'll probably go in that order. I'll create the slot cut and mirror, and then we can work on this rectangular cut, and then we'll finally put the fillets in last. And so for the slot cut, I should be able to get on that top face all the geometry is defined uh, for that sketch in this top view. And then in the note here on the bottom right, it says the depth is 5 millimeters. And so let's just get going on that feature. And so there's the face I want to make a sketch on. I'll use the straight slot tool inside of the sketcher. A horizontal slot. 25 millimeters is this dimension here. 50 millimeters is the length of the slot, and the width of the slot is 10 millimeters. And here, instead of boss extrude, we're going to do a cut extrude. And we said the depth was 5 millimeters from the note in the drawing. And so there's my first slot. Now we just need to mirror it across the top plane in order to create the slot on this face here. And so what we'll do is go feature mirror. Uh, the mirror plane is going to be the top plane that I'll select here from the flyout tree. Uh, the feature to mirror is just the cut extrude one. And I'll accept that geometry. And so I believe we've got the required geometry at this point. You can see the slot on the top and the slot on the bottom. And so now there needs to be a cut right through here. There's a rectangular cut there. And so in order to do that, I'm going to end up creating a plane uh, that's separate from the top, front top and right. It'll be a reference geometry plane. And so if you look here in the drawing, um, on the top view, there's actually an auxiliary view coming from it. And so here I've got A here with the arrow. Um, that's an attempt to designate this auxiliary view that's going to be facing this inclined uh, plane. And it looks like I've also cropped that view because I was only interested in the very top here. And in order to define the length, if you will, of that rectangular cut. Uh, the other dimension of the rectangle you can see in the right view, uh, 10 units there. Uh, but first, before we actually create that rectangle, we have to create the plane that will then sketch the rectangle upon. And so how we'll create that plane is we'll use some existing sketch material geometry as well as some temporary axes. And so to show the temporary axes, we just go up here to view and go down to temporary axes. And you can see at all the arc centers, we've got these temporary axes right here. There's one. And then also if I go into boss extrude one and show my sketch, here just clicking the sketch and hitting hide or show, I can now see a line segment there. That's how I defined that 125 degree angle. And I also have this temporary axes here. And so between the combination of those two, I should be able to create a reference geometry plane. And so what I'll do is go to reference geometry, go to plane, click the temporary axes, click the line segment there. It gets me to a coincident. And I'll go ahead and hit accept there. And so, so far so good. Uh, I think I can get rid of this sketch now. And now I can use the plane one that I created in order to create my sketch to drive the cut extrude. And so to do that, I'll go ahead and create the rectangle here. And the dimension, which would be 30 in the length, 10 and the height here. And so now that's the only thing that's left to do is center it up and down vertically here. Uh, you can see this edge here has been aligned just with the edge there, so that's good. 
And so one way I can center it is using some construction geometry. Here I'm going to just snap a line uh, to the origin and to the midpoint of this segment here. And so there you can see on the right hand side I'm snapping to the midpoint. I'll make this line in this case horizontal. Notice that centers everything, uh, but this line here I now need to make construction uh, because I don't want to use that as defining a boundary for my cut extrude. Uh, so I believe that rectangle should be good at this point, and I'll go to the features, extrude cut, uh, and condition here will be through all in both directions. So that looks good. And hitting enter gets to the appropriate geometry there. Uh, so now I'll just clean up a little bit. I'll turn the plane off, turn the temporary axis off as well. Last but not least, we have rounds and fillets, R1. You can kind of study the drawing to, to see where all those are at. And so rounds and fillets, the feature is right here. One for the radius. And then just apply that radius value to all the required edges. And so I believe those are all the required edges on the top. And then the same thing is happening on the bottom side. just like so. And it looks like I missed one edge. You can see that edge right there. And so to fix that, of course, we can go right into the, the fillet, select the edge, and reapply. And so one quick check of the drawing. I believe we have everything at this point. And so let's go ahead and check mass properties. Uh, 502.26 looks good. And the center mass is 32.37 in the X, 0 for the Y, and negative 4.78 millimeters in the Z. And so we're in good shape here. Uh, so next, what about the configuration A geometry? And so config A. Uh, you can see that the slot's been removed, and we've got a pattern of five holes. And we've got this little cut here on the far right, and we've got chamfers. And so a few differences there. And so here, uh, if you're taking like the CSWA exam, you can just go File, Save As. Uh, I'll try to do this all with configurations, though, so I'll keep it inside of the same part file. So what I'm going to do is right-click, go Config, Add Configuration. Name this one Configuration A. I'll just go ahead and click Yes here to link the display states. And now I'm ready to start working on my Configuration A geometry. Uh, the first thing I've got to do is eliminate the slots. And so I'll right click on the Cut Extrude 1. I'll go to Configure Feature. And then I'm just going to say, hey, suppress this in Config A. And so I'll hit OK. Notice it suppresses both the Cut Extrude 1 as well as the Mirror feature. Uh, since the Mirror was mirroring the Cut Extrude 1, it makes sense if you suppress the Cut Extrude 1 one. The Mirror one also has to go as well because it's not going to have anything to mirror then as well afterwards. Uh, so with that, um, let's go ahead and start with the whole pattern first. And so the whole pattern, I'm going to do a feature pattern. And so I'll just create a seed hole and then I'll pattern that extrude cut feature. And so there's the hole. I believe it is horizontal with the origin here. You can see the hole diameter is 8. And the distance between its center and the origin is 25 millimeters. So that's looking good. And now I'll just go straight into extrude cut and we'll go through all for the end condition to create the, the first hole. Now I need to copy this for a total of five holes. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and show again sketch one because I want this edge here. I'm not that edge, but the, the line segment. Uh, because when I go into linear pattern, I need a way to define the direction I'm patterning in. And I wanted to pattern it right along this line segment. And so I'll go straight into linear pattern. For direction one, I'm going to sketch that, select that sketch line. For Features and Faces 2 pattern, I'll go in here and select my Cut Extrude 3. There's a total of five instances, that's fine, uh, but what is the 
spacing, 13 millimeters. And so adjust the default 10 millimeters to 13 millimeters there. And hit the, the green check mark. Excuse that acknowledgement there. Uh, looks like we're having some stormy weather here. It's PSU when I'm recording the video. And so I'll go ahead and hide that sketch at this point. Um, one thing, just notation on the drawing, uh, 5 times 8 diameter EQSP. Uh, that means there's 5 8 diameter circles, and they're equally spaced between them, is the uh, information that's being conveyed with that note. Uh, so now let's go off to the right here. You can see this small cut, uh, five, or 2 millimeters there. It's centered on uh, this cutting plane line. And so let's go ahead and create that. Uh, here I'll just get on the top plane. Um, let's go ahead and convert entities here and here. I'll go ahead and draw a line here right at the midpoint. I'll make that construction. And then what I want is lines on either side of it. And then total width is two millimeters here. And of course it's centered. And so let's see if we can make this equal. There we go. By making those two line segments equal, um, it does center it for us there. So now we just need to do some trimming to get rid of the excess. And so you can see that excess bit of line here, or arc, we'll take that out as well. And so it's just this small little patch that we'll now do a cut extrude all in both directions. Through all in both directions there in order to create that small cut on that boss. Uh, the only thing left to do is the 2 by 45 degree chamfer there. And so we'll go right into the fillet tool to the chamfer tool. We'll change the length here or distance to 2 instead of the 10. 45 degrees is fine. I'm just going to select that inner cylindrical face. You can see it picks up the top and bottom edges. And I'll accept that chamfer definition. And kind of looking the model over to confirm. I think we've arrived at the, the correct geometry there. And so let's go ahead and check mass properties once again to confirm we don't have any mistakes. 513.69 uh, grams is good. 32.60 in the X, 0 in the Y, and negative 4.67 in the Z for the center of mass coordinates is also correct. Uh, so this model appears good. Um, I hope that uh, just watching the video and uh, practicing with it has helped you develop your, your SOLIDWORKS skills. Uh, thank you for watching the video.